Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to iScoot Connecticut. It's great to see everyone. Okay, I can't actually see you. Last year, I told all my e-bike friends that I could not ride with them since I did not have an e-bike. Then I got an e-bike and I told them I could not ride with them because I didn't have a bike rack for my car. No more excuses. I did my research and now I have a Hyperax bike rack. At least I have a box with one inside. This one is RV rated, which means it's super heavy duty. RV racks typically do not have the same tilting capability of other racks since that's a weak point. But both my e-bikes are around 70 pounds each and this one is rated for two 80 pound bikes. Not many racks on the market are rated that high. I also needed a rack that worked with bikes that had rear racks and fenders. I'm not gonna bore everyone with the specifications. I'll leave a link to the rack and the assembly manual in the description below. Take your time pulling everything out of the box. Some of the components are quite heavy. Besides a little plastic, the majority of the packaging can go into recycling. Sometimes you get a lot of styrofoam that can only go into the trash, but I don't see any here. I didn't have any issues with the unboxing, but double check and inventory all the components against the assembly manual. I chose to place the main bar into my vehicle's receiver as the first step. It seemed easier to me to assemble it that way as opposed to on the ground or on the workbench, but do whatever's easiest for you. You do not need to absolutely do this for assembly, but here I am inserting the hitch pin, the lock, and adjusting the hitch hole finder. The key for this hitch pin also works on the bike hold downs. The hitch hole finder is a great idea. I'm not sure who invented it or thought of adding it, but I owe them a beer. The horizontal bars go next. The fit of the removable pins was tight. One of mine needed a little persuading with a rubber mallet. I think it is because Hyperax uses a really thick powder coating on the bars and on the pins. I also started out using the tools provided with the rack. You can technically assemble everything with those tools. However, I switched off to using my own ratchet and sockets to make the job go easier and faster. Here is the vertical bar. It does tilt backwards so that I will be able to access my rear hatch as long as there's no bikes on the rack. Slide down the bike hold downs and bolt on the carry handle. The hold ons are key to like and match the hitch pin key. The feet go on in a specific order and pattern. It's hard to explain, so read the manual. I laid them out on the ground first to match the manual as to not screw up putting them on. They did need a firm touch to get them on, but once you get them adjusted to fit your bike, you should not be moving them around. The rack came with these hooks for the end of the horizontal bars. I'm not sure what they're for, but I put them on anyway. If you know what they're used for, please let me know in the comments. I suspect they might be tie downs for when the horizontal arms are folded in the upright position, but I can't be sure. Here is the rack with my Sonata Sabre e-bike. This bike has 26 by four inch tires and weighs 77 pounds with the battery. I removed the 11 pound battery to load the bike. Here is the rack with my Truxus Mobility Lynx e-bike. This bike has 20 by four inch tires and also weighs around 77 pounds. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Please consult HyperAx's official website for assembly and use. I'm just doing this video to show that an old fart like me can put it together. Please like and subscribe. I will be doing a video of the loaded rack in action on back roads and the highway. I'm anxious to see how it performs.